Uh, good, afternoon, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Leonardo Cortez. I work on the supervision of Dr. Dan Palermo at the University of Ottawa. Today, I'm going to present part of the work we're doing on rain, uh, retrofit of reinforced concrete structures uh, with using chain memory atoms, SMA. And specifically, I'm going to talk about shear walls. So why uh, retrofit uh, reinforced concrete structures and why retrofit uh, reinforced concrete uh, Shear walls. Uh, one of the reasons is a shear failure, and this is a, a sudden and brittle failure uh, that engineers uh, want to avoid because it can result in collapse of the structure. So this picture is from the earthquake uh, in Chile a couple of years ago, or last year. Uh, this is shear failure in a in a bridge uh, pier. So you can see how severe is the brittle and it's a shear failure, and the, and the purpose of using SMA. Uh, the, the retrofit that we are proposing is to avoid this type of failure and to promote a more flexure of failure or a more flexure response of the structure. So again, we want to improve, uh, increase uh, strength, we want to increase uh, ductility, and we want to reduce residual deformation. So uh, there are several uh, retrofit strategies for increasing strength and ductility, but there are few for reducing residual deformation and shape memory atlas is one of them. The retrofit the scheme is, is like it's illustrated here. So we are uh, we're proposing uh, like cross bracing with the stiff or rigid steel members uh, connected to the base of the wall and the top of the wall. Uh, at the center of the steel braces we have SMA. SMA links, or uh, they act like a fuse, um, and, uh, and they provide the, uh, uh, they can improve the response of the, of the shear walls. So uh, this is the scheme, the, uh, the concept, uh, rigid steel elements with the SMA links at the center, uh, cross bracing from the base of the wall to the top of the wall. Uh, the, uh, on the uh, on the right hand side, we have the response. But that's an unexpected response. So we can see uh, we can compare the original res the response of the original wall and the response of the retrofitted wall with SMA. And we can see that we can increase strength, ductility. Um, we can maintain the, the the residual deformation, which is uh, which is uh, delta P SMA. Um, or we can reduce it, so depending on the use of the SMA. If we, can, if, we compare the, if we compare the response of the SMA retrofit with the response of a regular traditional steel retrofit, we see that the SMA can provide less residual deformation than the steel. Previous research on retrofitting reinforced concrete shear walls, uh, specifically squat shear walls that are uh, prone to uh, shear failure. Uh, we see on the left hand side, left -hand side uh, an SMA bracing. This, mm, what we're proposing is an improvement of this retrofit scheme. In this, um, in this um, research project, uh, Liao et al. used uh, SMA, but they connect the SMA from the bottom, from the, from the base of the wall to the top, without using steel, rigid steel elements. So what we're proposing is to optimize the SMA material um, for two reasons. One is economical reason because SMA chain memory atoms are, are, are very expensive, expensive compared to uh, regular steel. And the second reason is because we want to optimize the material and we want to get enough elongation to promote recovery deformation. deformation. So for the uh, for a start, to study this uh, retrofit strategy, we designed uh, a prototype building. So this is a low-rise uh, prototype build, reinforced concrete building. Uh, this is, it, it is assumed to be located in uh, in Western Canada. It's a two-story building. Um, the main uh, seismic resistance system uh, is uh, shear walls. So we're going to study uh, uh, wall six, which is highlighted in red. And that wall is 6,000 millimeters long, 6,000 millimeter high, and 300 millimeter thick. So we can see here on the left hand side uh, the a comparison of the sheet of the seismic requirements uh, from the uh, 2010 and 
through 1970s, specifically 1966-65. So we see that we need in strength at least an increase of approximately four, four times. So uh, definitely we need to uh, retrofit this structure. So uh, one thing of this uh, pre-1970s structure, which are the, the, the structure we want to uh, focus on, is that they lack, a, they, they, they lack seismic detailing. So if you know the history, the, the development of the, of the seismic cells, uh, seismic detailing and seismic provision appeared in the 1970s. So buildings prior to the 1970s lack any confinements, uh, uh, reinforcement for the lab splices and other detail, detailings uh, to prevent uh, sudden failure and to provoke more flexural response. So here we have the seismic assessment of the shear wall retrofitted with SMA. So this uh, assessment uh, was uh, performed with a, a simple capacity spectrum method. So where the, uh, where the capacity diagram of the SMA retrofit is compared uh, against a reduced demand diagram. And this reduced demand diagram is based on the uniform hazard spectrum for the location of the building. So the, 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 the objective is to, to find the performance points, and the performance point, point is defined by the, uh, basically defined by the designer, but it, it, it depends on the expectation of the client or the, of, the, of the owner of the building. So similar assessment was conducted for a steel retrofit. Um, I did this to, uh, we did this to convert the uh, SMA retrofit with a traditional uh, steel retrofit and see the, the benefit of using SMA. So the seismic has said, uh, so the reduced the, the reduce demand diagram is, um, is calculated with reduction factors and those are basically the, those are based on equivalent dumping and are calculated with the energy dissipation uh, of the hysteretic of the hysteretic loop at the target displacement. So this is very simple. You can find it in uh, dynamic routes, and um, we are uh, we are following the methodology described in ATC 40 and uh, FEMA documents FEMA 356 and uh, FEMA 440. So to do to get the, the to get the capacity diagrams, we we conducted a finite element modeling uh, for for the SMA retrofit and for the for a steel retrofit. The SMA was uh, modeled with truss elements connected at the base of the wall and at the top of the wall, while the steel retrofit retrofit was modeled with truss element perfectly bonded or perfect, perfectly connected throughout the wall. Uh, here we have, we have, we, we can see the response of the SMA retrofit. Uh, the envelope of the SMA, of, of, the, of the response was used for the capacity diagram for the seismic uh, assessment. We see that the hysteretic response um, shows a good ductility, a good strength. So a strength of the original wall is about half of the strength of the retrofitted wall, uh, approximately 1,000 kilonewtons. Here we have a little bit more of 2,000 kilonewtons. And we can design the SMA based on the strength we want and the displacement. So with the assessment, we can, define, we can start modifying the area of the, of the SMA. And we can and we can start looking for the for the performance point. Uh, we see that we have a uh, little procedural displacement, small procedural displacement, and on the left hand side we have the, the, the damage or uh, the cracking diagram for that wall, and but that that damage corresponds to uh, rocking behavior and a sliding shear at the base of the wall. So this is, there is something uh, important here that we predicted for this wall, a maximum residual crack of 50 millimeters. 
So similarly, for the steel retrofit, the response uh, uh, we, we, we traced the envelope, and that envelope was used for the capacity data for the seismic assessment, and that's uh, part of the design of the retrofit. When after doing the design, we ended up with uh, about approximately 2,000 kilonewton strength and a per, um, about 25 millimeter displacement. Uh, this is uh, at the point of uh, collapse, before collapse of the structure. The damage on the, on the left hand side uh, shows a flexure and shear cracking and plus a uh, rupture of the steel at the base. Maximum residual crack for this wall was uh, 46 millimeters. And one thing, uh, if you remember the last figure, is uh, for, last, for the SMA retrofit, is for the steel retrofit, we have extensive damage throughout the wall, specifically at the, at the bottom half of the wall, while for the SMA retrofit, we have, we obtain localized, we predict the localized damage at the base of the wall. Also, uh, for, this, uh, for, the, for this traditional retrofit, we see beautiful hysteretic loops, good energy dissipation we can see by looking at the area and at the curve of those uh, hysteretic loops, but we also see significant residual deformation if we compare it to the, to, to the residual deformation predicted for the SMA retrofit. So we also calculated the energy dissipation. Um, basically, this is the cumulative, cumulative energy dissipation uh, expressing kilonewtons, millimeters. Uh, this is the area and the curve of the of the of the hysteretic responses. So I think we can see that for the original wall, with this the wall non-retrofitted, uh, we have we don't we don't have much energy dissipation compared to the retrofitted wall. So the both retrofitted strategies, the proposed SMA retrofit and the traditional steel retrofit, can improve the energy dissipation. Um, but more than twice. If we compare 18 millimeters, we see that the SMA retrofit, the wall retrofitted with SMA, uh, can dissipate more energy than the wall retrofitted with steel plate. So this is important. And if we if we go beyond for, further further than 18 millimeters, we see that the steel retrofit dissipate more energy, and this is basically because even the SMA is good in dissipation, in, in dissipating energy and good in recovering um, plastic deformation. Uh, for this, for this, for this analysis, the steel plate retrofitting provided a little, a little more ductility. So we're capable of dissipating more energy. So in, so what are the benefits of SMA retrofit? So one is ductility. So based on the numerical analysis, we can say that the SMA retrofit can potentially increase the ductility up to 200% compared to the original wall. It can improve the strength about 200% of the original wall. And it can improve energy dissipation about two times the original wall at, when compared at 13 millimeters where the original wall failed and about 133% much energy dissipation than the steel plates compared at 18 millimeters where the wall retrofitted with SMA failed. Other benefits of using SMA retrofit are recentering. So we reduce the, the residual plastic deformations of the original wall, I mean with respect to the original wall by one third, and we reduce the recentering, uh, the, the permanent residual plastic deformation by one seventh compared to the steel plates. Also, there is a, a reduction of the residual cracks. Uh, half of the, of the cracks, half of the size predicted for the original wall, and one third of the of the size predicted for for the steel plates. Another thing that is very important is the damage. So traditional retrofits, perfectly bonded steel plates, um, walls, this wall can sustain extensive damage throughout the wall, while with the SMA and specifically the 
the, the retrofit we are proposing, the retrofit scheme, uh, we predict the localized damage at the base of the wall. This is part of the experimental, uh, experimental program we are conducting. Uh, these are the dimensions of the wall. Uh, this is a uh, one-third scale shear wall, and this this shear wall is an, it, it, the scale. The scale was from the prototype building I showed you. Um, it's 2,000 millimeters by 2,000 millimeters and 100 millimeter thickness. Uh, this wall has uh, minimal reinforcement. There is no uh, boundary elements. There are no confining. Uh, this is the minimal reinforcement that was provided in prior to the 1970s. Uh, the acknowledgement uh, to Public Works and Government Service Canada and to the Canadian Seismic Research Network who have funded uh, this research. Thank you. Any questions? Um, I've, been, I've been immersed in, in cheap technologies and old buildings. So you have to fill me in. What exactly is a shape memory alloy? Okay, so that's a, yeah, thank you for the question, so you can clarify. Uh, shape memory, there are two types of shape memory alloys. Basically, it's a, it's a metal material, like a steel, but this alloy can sustain permanent deformation and then can recover its deformation. There are two ways to recover the deformation. One of, one of them is uh, through temperature. So let's say I have this material, I stretch it, and it goes, uh, and it sustains permanent deformation, and then I, I got a lighter, and I heat it up, and it recovers the deformation. That's one type of chain memory alloy. The one that, I'm, uh, that, I'm, that we're using here, we are we're studying here, is called, sup, it's called um, super elastic chain memory alloy. Yeah, so the, the, this, this material, you stretch it, and then, to recover the, 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 the shape, you have to load it. You have to unload it. So this, you recover the, 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 the shape by applying load. So this is the second one, and this is the one we're using for seismic application. Because of the nature of earthquake, so in earthquake we have load and loaded. And so we are getting benefit of this uh, uh, loaded pattern. Yes? Yeah, just a quick question. What is the, what's the cost of the resume? Yeah, so this material is, is very expensive. It could be, I don't, I don't know exactly the cost because I haven't bought my, purchased my material. But I, but I know that it's, it could be a, about 100 times the price of regular reinforcement steel. But the benefit, but the thing is, uh, by, in this retrofit, we, we're trying to optimize the material, minimize it for, for cost. And the other thing is the benefits of retrofitting one element uh, could, I mean, could, pre could prevent the collapse of a building, which is, um, which is uh, more expensive than like a one foot or, or two feet of material. It's still economic. It's still economic approach. Spending. Yeah. Yeah. So putting putting some money on this retrofit can save a lot of money uh, to the building. To the owner. Any other questions? Thank you very much, Larry.